It is Friday, November 16th, 2018. Thank you all for tuning into the Steam Mobile Tech YouTube channel. For this edition of the video, I wanna go ahead and get into some Verizon news, some 5G news, a uh, little bit on a merger update, and then also some deals for you guys. So I don't wanna take up too much of your time, so let me go ahead and get right into the content. First thing I wanna talk about is uh, Verizon. They, in case you don't know what this is, they have been testing this uh, 5G Moto Mod with a particular device made by Motorola. I believe it is the Moto Z3. They have successfully confirmed that they have functionality and 5G connectivity with this Moto Z3 model, with this Moto Mod. Uh, it has achieved call, it has achieved data transfer through this 5G mod. Uh, the testing was done um, in Providence, Rhode Island, and according to them, this is true and real 5G standard protocol. So using the 5G modem mod attachment, they're able to have successful connectivity to call, text, and data transfer. So in terms of hardware, what you guys are looking at here in this modem mod, it is a Qualcomm made uh, Snapdragon X50 5G modem that's within this particular hardware. Uh, it does utilize antennas. I guess the model is QTM052, which is compatible with millimeter wave antennas. Uh, I believe the spectrum they utilized was 28 gigahertz band. And um, if you ask me, I think this is great news. You know, I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go ahead and buy a Moto Z3 just to have this connectivity, nor do I really think that this Moto Mod is necessarily the answer to 5G, but it is a step in the right direction and it is something in terms of 5G. So we have been talking about 5G extensively for the last several months here on the channel. Here we actually have Verizon doing something here as it pertains to this particular technology. So it's really nice that they're doing this. It's really nice that this is a commercially available phone that is I guess technically future upgradable for the technology. I don't know exactly how much the, the Moto Mod is gonna cost. I know the device right now is about $400 or 450 bucks, brand new. It has like uh, Snapdragon 835, which is kind of an older processor, but with this attachment, with this mod, it does have the 5G connectivity. So it does offer its perks. I think, you know, I'm hoping that this would also be compatible with like the Moto Z2 Play, the Moto Z2 Force, you know, any of these other devices, but they keep referring to the Moto Z3. So I'm wondering if maybe it is kind of tied down to that particular device. But it's good to see that they are making some progress in this. No notes on when it would become available or how much it would cost uh, consumers when it does come out, but we are expecting it in late quarter one of 2019. So that could just be a couple of months away. I'll keep you guys posted here on the channel if I get any more news on this particular device. Uh, the second thing I wanted to add from Verizon is some news coming from their 5G side, uh, specifically the fixed 5G side. So 5G residential, uh, they have been doing some testing on it and they have been you know, actually installing it in some of the, the markets that we've identified already. Uh, so it is actually turns out that it's faster than anticipated uh, as it pertains actually specifically to the minimum speeds. So it was estimated that 5G, uh, fixed 5G from Verizon was gonna range somewhere between 300 megabits per second on the minimum and up to one full gig um, in terms of its peak speeds. And it turns out that it's actually faster for its minimum. They're seeing typical speeds averaging around four or 500 megabits per second. So that's really good. We also know the cost of the service. Um, so we're at about $70 per month for a non-Verizon wireless customer, and you get a $20 discount if you are a Verizon wireless customer. Brings it down to 50 bucks a month. There are only four markets that have this uh, service available to them. So it is uh, Sacramento, LA, Houston, and Indianapolis. Now, Verizon also was quoted this week at a conference where they were talking about Verizon as it pertains to the fixed 5G, and they were talking about how they're gonna transition to other markets. One of the things that they were saying was preventing them from being in more markets, which a lot of customers wanna know, is that the 5G markets depend on fiber optics to be installed, which it hasn't been done yet. So that's one holdup. And the other holdup is the simple fact that these are not 5G standards-based protocols for the 5G that we currently have from Verizon. So once the fixed 5G, um, I guess the standards based protocol is achieved and rolled out and we've got the fiber in place. We're going to start to see more and more markets uh, receiving this available service from Verizon. So this is all going to be happening in 2019. I think 2019 is going to be a big year for Verizon as it pertains to fixed 5G and then moving forward with its mobile 5G. So 2020, I think Verizon's looking to really bank big when it comes to financials on 5G in terms of fixed. 
and also 5G as it pertains to mobile. So that's all the news coming out of Verizon. Uh, the next thing I have for you guys actually is just some just uh, basic 5G news. Actually, I think it was Wednesday, so a couple of days ago, uh, the FCC held its first millimeter wave 5G spectrum auction. Uh, up for grabs was uh, 27.5 to 28. 0.356 gigahertz band spectrum divided into two 425 megahertz blocks. I believe the count was 3,000 licenses. I think it was over 3,000 licenses. Uh, there were 45 bidders on the auction. Uh, this was undisclosed, so we don't really know for sure who was all in there, but it was at least 40. I think they said up to 45. 2,000 uh, received bids in terms of the 3,000 licenses. 1,000 did not receive any bids. The auction itself for total raised $36 million. I think it was like 36.4 million. Uh, the licenses went to uh, cities in Florida, Texas, uh, Hawaii, California, and Pennsylvania. They seem to be the winners there. Uh, now, in terms of up-and-coming auctions, we're expecting a 24 gigahertz spectrum auction with about 3,000 licenses next year. I think I think it was mid. Yeah, I think it was like mid 2019. So we're expecting late spring, early summer, and then a third auction probably by the end of the year. Uh, bands 37, 39, and 47 gigahertz uh, towards the end of the end of the year. So um, just for those of you keeping track at home, Verizon has a ton of millimeter wave spectrum holdings, as does AT&T, but that's not going to prevent them from bidding and trying to get more licenses in places to continue to deploy and build out their 5G networks. So it's definitely not enough. So they're going to be participating heavily in these 5G auctions. T-Mobile is going to be a big player in this as well. And, you know, Cox was one of the cable providers that was going to be involved uh, and actively bidding on Spectrum. I'm not sure who else is in there, but those are some of the companies that we know for sure. Uh, before actually I transition to the offers, I wanted to give you guys a merger update. So the FCC has announced a restart of the informal 180 day review process for the proposed merger. Uh, it was previously paused, I believe in September. Uh, and now we're going to officially get the restart on December 4th, 2018. So just a couple of weeks away. Um, basically what the FCC wanted to do was they wanted to pause it because there were several economic concerns. Uh, they wanted to take a look at some new data that they had obtained, some new documentation that they had, uh, that they had obtained in August and September that they had basically deemed that they had to review. Uh, the FCC wants the feedback on some of this data and some of the findings they want to present it. Obviously, this is just kind of like the DOJ and the FCC kind of doing their thing, uh, but it looks like it's kind of back on when it comes to the clock. Now, I've said previously that just because the clock stopped doesn't mean that the deal was going to fall. So I still think that the probability of the deal happening is still just as likely as it was before. This just kind of puts it back on that informal clock uh, that we have heard referenced to several times. So the DOJ um, is investigating, you know, the merging companies are kind of been the ones that have been holding this up. The DOJ wants to proceed and they want to get a deal done or they want to, you know, put closure to the situation. But in terms of um, the attorney general, he has said several times that the only time mergers ever get slowed down is when the merging companies are preventing progress from happening. They're not disclosing information and they're not providing the documentation that the DOJ needs. So that could be the situation here. But as Sprint and T-Mobile provide those documents and become more transparent, we should get more closure and progress to the situation. So a decision is forthcoming for sure. We're expecting it. Uh, but again, we just kind of waiting. We're playing this waiting game. We'll have news December 4th when this does officially get back put on the clock. And then, of course, it's hypothetical but we could potentially see the merger actually get approved anytime in 2019 really so um, you know they're gonna investigate sprints claims that they can't compete in the future they're gonna investigate sprints claims uh, that they're gonna fail without the merger those are some of the things that are really important to the DOJ you know I don't I'm not really sure if they really support this claim I think the DOJ is looking at it strategically how it's gonna help the consumer market how it's gonna help the American public and that's basically what the holdup has been so that's it for that but it is it is news nonetheless now, in terms of deals, uh, this one's coming from T-Mobile. You can get a free OnePlus 6T if you add a new line and trade in an eligible phone. The promo begins November 16th, so it is available today. Uh, the trade-in phone must be an eligible device. Uh, some of the details we know is you could trade in an iPhone 6S, iPhone 7, um, 
original Google Pixel or Pixel 2, Samsung Galaxy S8, uh, and there are some other Samsung devices that qualify. Uh, basically, these are one or two year old uh, flagship devices. Uh, some other Black Friday deals coming from T-Mobile. They have up to $750 in bill credits uh, on an upgrade on a phone. You would have to add a new line and trade in an eligible device. That seems to be the way they're doing things. Uh, some of the devices that are up uh, on this upgrade is the iPhone XR, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Those three models would be considered free. Others, you would have to pay the difference if they are more costly. Uh, the trade-in devices eligible are the iPhone 6S or newer, the Samsung Galaxy S6 or newer, the original Google Pixel, or the Moto Z2 Play. All would qualify. Now, do keep in mind that you know T-Mobile kind of does things in a weird way. Now they're doing some 36-month bill credits, so they may actually force you to be on a 36-month bill credit to get the difference of these monies. So if you get for example, bill credits on a trade-in for like a Galaxy S6, you may have to see that spaced out over three years, so it'll keep you locked in for a while. Now, if you ask me, 24 months is plenty of time to have to wait for your money. 36 months is outrageous, so do choose wisely if you plan on taking care of this uh, type of an, of an offer, taking them up on it. I say, you know, 36 months is just too much, but hey, everybody's got to deal with you know, certain things if they're going to be taking advantage of those offers. So that's it for this one. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video. Before I let you guys go, I just want to make an announcement that tomorrow on Saturday, I'm going to have a really, really big thing going on on YouTube. I haven't really announced what it is, but it is something new to the channel. It is something that I consider uh, to kind of be uh, maybe something that I would do in the future. And if it's successful, maybe it's something that'll stick around, but I think you guys are really, really gonna enjoy it. So make sure that if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, ding to be notified whenever I upload the content, especially when I have live streams and other things going on. So I'll put links in the description below for all things connected to the Steam Mobile Tech YouTube channel. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for the live stream podcast, something very special going on there. So definitely uh, tune in and check us out there. So thanks again for watching. I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.